early early in the 70s, they thought that we have 100,000 protein coding genes, but uh, apparently it's much smaller than that. The current est best estimates currently are is uh, 20,000. And the differences among human individuals, the difference between my human, uh, my uh, genome sequence and your genome sequence, for example, is only 1% or 1.1% or one part per thousand. So we are on the average 99.9% .9 of similar genome sequence for humans. As with the, our closest species, the chimpanzees and the bonobos, we have a 4% difference in protein coding uh, sequences. And genetic variation among people is largely composed of SNPs or single nucleotide polymorphisms, of which on the average there is about three to four million per individual, and CNVs or copy number variations. In other, in other words, when a gene has two copies in an individual and four copies in another and so on as a result of gene duplication, things like that. So the key concept on personal medicine is that since your genome sequence is personal, you have a unique genotype. And since genotype gives rise to phenotype, you must also have your own personal phenotype. And this personal phenotype is what makes, is what determines your, your response to medical treatments. Uh, whether this person will respond favor favorably with this medicine or this technique, and the, another person will not. So that is the type of uh, treatment that personal medicine can do. It is tailor-made for the, for the individual patient with knowledge of his or her, him, of her uh, personal geno genome, genome sequence. So yeah, this is the, so the key concept is that diseases and disorders occur within the context of the patient's genome sequence. And, and because it is affected by the patient's unique phenotype. And there, are, and there are other OMS also, like transcriptome, the set of all RNAs in the, uh, in the individual proteome for proteins, lipidome for the set of all lipids, and so on. So this is the, the omics revolution. So in, my, in the executive summary of my uh, pro business proposal, it will function to enable to greatly enable personalized medicine in the Rochester area. And I patterned it after the Scripps Research Institute, or TSRI in La Jolla, California. The, the business proposal is patterned after that. Because I, because I worked there at TSRI for five years as a senior research associate. So I know pretty much or sort of pretty much how it operates and so on. And it will have four main divisions. My company would have four main divisions, the, mole the molecular bio-interaction, um, biomolecular bi uh, interactions division, BMI, molecular the, uh, biological simulations division, or the MBS, and the omics data mining and profiling division. And the fourth division is not scientific. It's, uh, it's going to be the technological and uh, translational and uh, commercialization division. So it, it will have three scientific divisions and one applied division, you know, the techno uh, technology transfer division. And it will be part nonprofit and part for profit in the next uh, within within two or three years, because I plan to inc I plan to have a uh, a for profit subsidiary uh, after two or three years, which will be the main source of income for the uh, for the corporation. Actually, I plan to have two. The first one is a personal medical clinic, an actual clinic that takes care of patients, and the th then the third and the second uh, subsidiary that I plan to have, which would also be for profit, will be a manufacturing system for medical and health devices. Because with the advent of, uh, you know, uh, real-time data for medical data and health data, these devices 
would come in handy. And those two subsidiaries, proposed subsidiaries for now, will be uh, majored revenue generating or money generating arms of the corporation. There, there's also a plan to have a graduate program of a master's at the master's level and the PhD level after five years of operation, maybe. And this involves a, a very difficult step called accreditation. You will need to apply for accreditation from the uh, Department of uh, from accredita from different accredit accreditating accred accreditation uh, uh, entities in here in New York, and then. So here it is, a personalized medical clinic to be created after five years. And then lastly, I also plan to have a collaborative interaction with the University of the Philippines, where I graduated and where I have a lot of, a lot of connections. Well, not really connections, but I know a lot of people there who are in, in high places, so to speak, who can, who can help us, who can help the company maybe uh, obtain accreditation or maybe even for funding and, uh, and the like and advising and so on. So the, the company is expected to become self-sufficient after the eighth or ninth years of, of operation. So as you can see, this is really a, a long-term a long view of the corporation. It, it, we expect to be self-sufficient before ten, ten, the 10th year of operation with money coming from government grants, philanthropic donations like the Carnegie Foundation, for example, the Bill and the Melinda Gates Foundation and so on, which I have contacted already. And I have some, a few answers which are, which are encouraging somewhat, but a lot more which are discouraging because it is so tedious and involve, involves a lot of work. So I have thought about, I've mentioned this uh, previously, the Molecular and Biological Simulations Division, which is one of the three scientific divisions proposed for the company, and it will do a molecular simulation. I chose this, uh, this subject because in order to find out the, the, the phenotypes of the, different, of the different variants of biomolecules, like proteins, for example, that have uh, an amino acid change or, or two, you need to uh, be able to simulate simulate them in, uh, in different uh, biochemical cascades or pathways so that you will find out, in order to find out its phenotype. Knowing the genotype, we don't have any clue about the phenotype, so simulation is the only thing we could uh, do that computationally, but ideally experimentally, you know. And the second uh, scientific branch is the Biomolecular Interactions Division. This will be the division that I will head because this is uh, my uh, this is what I consider to be my my strong uh, area by molecular interactions because I've been working on protein ligand interactions for many years, especially enzyme substrate interactions, and I have developed a method to represent proteins in a reduced form. And right now I'm trying to do the same for nucleic acids, lipids, and, and glycans, uh, give, giving them a reduced representation in order to simplify the study of their interactions. Not only simplify, but predict what, what other ligands, uh, what ligands a given protein interacts with or what uh, other proteins they interact with. So uh, in, my, in my view, uh, representing these biomolecules, you know, proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, DNA, RNA, and so on. And the key to rep the key to finding out their interactions is to use a reduced representation. In my case, I have developed a double centroid reduced representation for proteins, which are representation which is, which represents proteins as just as centroids of its side chain and the, the backbone atoms. So each amino acid is just represented as two, two points in space. And this reduces the atomicity of the protein. And you can work with it computationally in a much easier, much, much, much less tedious manner compared to the all-atom representation where each amino acid, I, I believe, has 
19 to 20 atoms. So you have reduced the atomicity to uh, by more than 70% if you use this reduced representation. And the third branch, the third scientific division is the omics data mining and profiling division. The, um, the, the profiles, these profiles are key to determining the, the behavior of the, the, um, the predictability of a patient's condition. Uh, because different diseases have different profiles of these ohms. For example, it has been determined, for example, that uh, people with pancreatic cancer has a different profi uh, RNA profile or transcriptomic profile from people without any predisposition to pancreatic cancer. I've had a lot of friends, and well, not a lot, but a couple of friends and former colleagues who died of pancreatic cancer, so I became very interested in this. Uh, and other diseases also have different profiles from uh, healthy individuals. So this profiling uh, division will be very, very important because this is the uh, predictive arm of the company. I mean, this is prediction component of the company. The technology transfer and commercialization division, the fourth division, will be, will be will be charged with uh, the legal aspects of patenting and copywriting assets discovered at the corporation. And uh, we will hold regular brainstorming sessions on, on how to commercialize any discoveries or developments, for example, that uh, has been uh, achieved by the, by the corporation. And the personnel here will have a double uh, expertise in the life sciences and uh, and business and regulatory uh, specialties and commercial uh, commercial, commercial uh, training. So this I have mentioned before. I think we will have an internal mentoring program. That's also one of the specific goals of the company. An internal mentoring program is, is now being um, is now being uh, uh, established in many corporate corporations. Uh, because it is found to be very crucial to the cohesion, the cohesion and the camaraderie of the uh, of the work of the employees within the corporation. Internal mentoring is just a kind of uh, uh, it's a it's a like having a like having an expert teach or lecture the other members of the corporation. Uh, in a in a in a subject that he is very familiar or an, or a pro very proficient with. And this mentoring can is is not dependent on rank. For example, uh, for example, a um, a technician could easily mentor more senior members of the uh, corporation on some technique, very important technique that he or she is very capable of doing, and so on. And of course, postdocs can mentor their their uh, co postdocs in their fields of specialty and so on. And this builds the camaraderie and cohesion among the group. It, it, it was found. And it also tends to, tends to lengthen the uh, turnover time. I mean, the workers tend to stay longer with the company if they have, if they have this, pro, if, they, if the company has this program because the workers or the employees think that they are really uh, learning not just working for the company. I am also proposing what I used to call the initial formation period, period or IFP, but now I've changed the name to the pre-operation period or POP. And it will be considered as the zeroth year for the corporation. We don't count it as, a, as an operating year. And in this period, the only member well, right now I'm the only member of this corporation, but in zero year is when all the hiring will be done, uh, all the advertisements and the websites and and on will be done, all the job openings announced, and uh, interviewing of prospective employees. So this is the zero year, uh, and we are only asking. I'm only asking for about. $100, $100,000 for, or even less 
for the zeroth year because all the you know all the mundane things that uh, a corporation needs will be done in within this period so we're we're asking for 100,000 ideally but even less for a period of 8 to 10 months well it says 5 to 10 eight, for 5 to 8 months here but it may take longer than that where all the you know the non scientific steps will be done before the company launches in into full gear on year number one, year number two, three, and so on, and so on. And my business plan is in ResearchGate, uh, and the links are uh, shown here. And please, if you have time, I know you you guys are busy. You have, if you have time, please feel free to read it and give me your feedback if you want, if 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 you can. So thank you very much for for your time, and wish me luck in this in this endeavor. Thank you. Good luck. <laughs>